assalamu alaikum everyone hope you all are doing great uh, so today we have our guest speaker dr nagman zubairi with us and he will be continuing the part 3 of the setting up of the teeth in complete denture and balance articulation so without any do i would like to welcome dr nagman zubairi assalamu alaikum sir how are you uh, wa alaikum assalam i am good alhamdulillah so let's continue with our part 3 of setting up of the teeth in complete dentures and balanced articulation our next uh, lecture will be how to uh, like uh, the in the uh, coming week we will be having how to achieve this balanced articulation like we have done the setup why it is required how it is being achieved what are the advantages of having it etc etc so now let's start with this topic we have discussed about the anatomical landmarks and which aids uh, uh, like in uh, setting up of the posterior and anterior teeth so over here we can see the palatal midline it extends through the middle of the incisive papilla and mid palatal raf and then we check for the symmetry if not symmetrical we adjust the rim we have also discussed about the uh midline and canine references there is a line which passes through the distal of incisive papilla and should be perpendicular to the palatal midline so it should intersect the cusp tips of the canines it these two lines should be scribed on the cast and the record basis they will give us the reference for our anterior teeth setup now on patient's face we have to find out the canine lines the six maxillary anterior teeth they occupy the space between the distal of the right canine eminence and the distal of the left canine eminence midline is also taken in patient's mouth it's a line drawn entero posteriorly bisecting the mid sagittal suture incisive papilla and labial frenum it co coincides with the midline of the upper dental arch there are certain other important landmarks as well like nose it plays a very vital role the distance between the tips of the canine is same as the width of base of the nose a vertical line extending along the lateral surface of the ala often will pass through the middle of the natural upper canine then comes the philtrum width of the upper centrals they approximate the width of philtrum this is the philtrum height this is the philtrum width these are the commissures this is the commissure height and this is the interlabial gap if you are using very small size teeth then teeth are not going to be visible when patient would be smiling then comes the interpupillary line the occlusal plane of the maxillary anterior teeth should be parallel to the interpupillary line and then the ala tragus line the posterior occlusal plane should be parallel to the ala tragus line from the ala of the nose to the tragus of the ear we use this fox's plane to uh, find out this ala tragus line and we uh, adjust the occlusion the occlusal plane according to that arrangement of the maxillary anterior teeth incisal edges of the central incisors and canines they are at level of the occlusal plane whereas lateral incisors are placed almost 0.5 mm to 2 mm above the occlusal plane we have discussed it in our previous lecture as well the circumference or labial contour should follow the arch shape we can use a flexible ruler to place over here in order to identify if our setup is following the arch shape or not look for the symmetry where the right and left maxillary anterior teeth should be positioned they should be symmetrical on either side of the arch now over here don't let the record bases dictate you for the setup of the teeth they should be arranged as they 
needed to be arranged. You have to do alteration over here. Do not follow the shape of the record basis. Just follow the arch shape and you can do some necessary alteration if aesthetics are going to dictate you. When we are going to place the maxillary central incisors and these are the first teeth to be placed. So what we do, we firstly identify the midline, we replace the labial contour of the upper wax block and just touching the occlusal plane, we are going to place the maxillary central incisor. Incisal edges placed more anteriorly than their necks to support the lips in a slightly prominent and natural position. So the inclination will be slightly positive. And to give slight overjet as well. The long axis of the tooth is parallel to the vertical axis when viewed from the front. The long axis of the tooth is sloping labially when viewed from the side. As I have told you, we call a positive inclination. If they are inclined in such a way, the teeth are inclined in such a way that the incisal area or the occlusal area is labial or buccal to the cervical area, that is known as the positive inclination. When the incisal area or the occlusal area is more lingual as compared to the cervical area, that is known as the negative inclination. So in central incisors and lateral incisors, we are going to have positive inclination. Now comes the maxillary lateral incisors. The lateral incisor should be positioned with the incisal edge 0 to 2 millimeter of the occlusal plane, as we have already discussed, 0.5 millimeter to 2 millimeter actually. But some of the authors, they say that you can even place it very close to the central incisors, incisal edge where it is, or uh, uh, closer to the occlusal plane. This will vary according to the age of the patient. Older patients would not normally be expected to have a youthful step between the centrals and laterals due to the wear of the centrals and canines, which makes sense. The incisal edge is placed more anteriorly than the next to support the lips in a slightly prominent and natural position. I have explained to you that we need, even in the lateral incisors, positive inclination, a positive overjet type of thing, slightly overjet. The long axis of the tooth is tilted towards the midline when viewed from the front. The long axis of the tooth is tilted towards the midline, tilted towards the midline at an angle. Again, very important point is the cervical, if you are looking at uh, from like the front area, the cervical area should be slightly distal to the incisal area in all the anterior teeth. The long axis of the tooth is sloping labially when viewed from the side, the inclination of the slope is greater than that of the central incisor. The incisal edge is two millimeter above the level of the occlusal plane up to two millimeter, zero millimeter to two millimeter above the level of the occlusal plane and the edge is tilted towards the midline like this. Maxillary canine. The canines should be positioned to show their mesial aspects when viewed from the front. The incisal edge should just touch the occlusal plane. The incisal tip, it should just touch the occlusal plane. The neck of the canine should be prominent and more anteriorly placed than the incisal edge to emphasize the canine eminence and to support the lips. In canine, the cervical area will be more labially placed as compared to the incisal tip. Now, teeth from here onwards towards the back towards the posterior area, they will go into negative inclination, labiolingually negative inclination or buccolingually negative inclination. The long axis of the tooth is parallel to the vertical axis when viewed from the front, a mild mesial tilt is supposed to improve its aesthetics. 
the cuspal tip of the canine touches the plane of the occlusion. We can see the reflection over here. Lateral incisor is slightly away, central incisor is touching, and canine tip is touching. Now the upper posterior teeth. The upper posterior teeth are set over or slightly buckled to the ridge such that their occlusal surfaces lie slightly buckled to the lower ridge. The teeth are positioned to create a compensating curve. The steepness of the curve depends on the condylar angle, the cusp angle of the teeth and incisal guidance angle. The steeper the angle, the steeper will be the compensating curve needs to be. Curve of B and Curve of Wilson, when we talk about those in the complete denture prosthodontics, they are called compensating curves. In our next lecture, when we will be talking about the uh, balanced articulation, how to achieve it, we will discuss those in detail. The curve of speech should match the condylar angle to maintain contact between the teeth in protrusive excursions. Upper, upper first premolar setup. First premolar setup. First premolar. The long axis of the tooth is parallel to the vertical axis when viewed from the front. The buccal cusp touches the occlusal plane and the platal cusp is positioned almost 0.5 millimeter away from the occlusal plane. Upper second premolar. The long axis of the tooth is parallel to the vertical axis when viewed from the front. The long axis of the tooth is parallel to the vertical axis when viewed from the side also. Buccal and palatal, both the cusps should be touching the occlusal plane. Buccal and lingual, both the cusps should be touching the occlusal plane. We can see it in the reflection. Even here we can see that. Here only the buccal cusp should touch. Now comes the upper first molar. The long axis inclines distally and buccally. The mesioplatal cusp contacts the occlusal plane. Mesioplatal or mesiolingual, whatever you call it, it should be touching the occlusal plane. This tilt provides the lateral curve. The lateral or the curve of Wilson, which we call in natural dentition, that compensatory curve, lateral curve. Upper second molar. <clears throat> the long axis of the tooth is tilted buckly when viewed from the front. The long axis of the tooth is tilted distally when viewed from the side. There is a tilt to have both the compensation curves. No cusp touch the occlusal plane, but the mesioplatal cusp should be close, very close to the occlusal plane. But none of the cusps should be touching the occlusal plane. Just the mesioplatal cusp or mesiolingual cusp, they sh should be closer to the occlusal plane. This is to create the compensatory or compensation curves. Now come the <coughs> lower incisor, uh, like incisor region or lower anteriors, I must say. The long axis of the tooth is parallel to the vertical axis when viewed from the front. When viewed from the front. This is the occlusal plane. The long axis of the tooth slopes slightly labially when viewed from the side. The incisal edge of the tooth should be 2 millimeter above the plane of occlusion. Mandibular lateral incisors. The long axis of the tooth is parallel to the vertical axis when viewed from the front. The long axis of the tooth slopes slightly labially when viewed from the side, means from the proximal area, like this. But not so steeply as the central incisor is. The incisal edge of the tooth should be 2 millimeter above the plane of occlusion. Some of the uh, authors, they recommend 2 millimeters. Some say that at the level. So whatever the author we are following, we will go according to that. Mandibular canine. 
the long axis of the tooth is very slightly tilted lingually when viewed from the front very slightly tilted lingually because we know that our upper canines are also in negative inclination they are going in negative inclination centrals and laterals they are in zero inclination they are straight the long axis of the tooth slopes slightly mesially when viewed from the side the canine tip is slightly more than two millimeter above the occlusal plane at the same level as of centrals and laterals centrals laterals canines all should be at the same level whether you are keeping it at the occlusal level occlusal, occlusal plane level or one millimeter two millimeter above the occlusal plane whatever is your intention they all should be at the same level we have discussed it in our previous lecture as well now comes the mandibular first premolar the long axis is parallel to the vertical plane the buccal cusp of the mandibular first premolar should engage the mesial marginal ridge of the maxillary first premolar lingual cusp is below the occlusal plane while the buccal cusp is two millimeter above the occlusal plane mandibular second premolar the long axis is parallel to the vertical plane the buccal cusp tip should engage the embrasure between the maxillary first premolar and second premolar its two cusps are about two millimeter above the occlusal plane the central fossa of the mandibular second premolar and the first premolar are over the crest of the ridge for the stability central fossa so that antagonists they are going to occlude in the central fossa and provide stability to the lower denture the teeth need to be set over the crest of the ridge to maximize denture stability and support we have even discussed it in our previous lecture now comes the first molar the long axis of the tooth slopes slightly lingually when viewed from the front that is for lateral cusp the lingual cusp is below the occlusal plane and the buccal cusp should be two millimeter above the occlusal plane for the entero posterior curve which is also known as curve of speed this is how it should be mandibular second molar the long axis of the tooth slopes slightly lingually when viewed from the front both the cusps are two millimeter above the level of the occlusal plane the curve of spi is created by slightly elevating the distal half of the first molar and by elevating the second molar by about 15 degrees up from the occlusal plane We have to keep in mind about the overjet and overbite both in the anterior region and the posterior region. Avoid too much overbite or too little overjet. Increasing the overbite steepens the angle separating posterior teeth more quickly, means you are going to have more anterior guidance. Increasing the overjet shallows the angle separating the posterior teeth less quickly. Hence, you will be grinding the cusps for allowing for the because when there will be increased anterior guidance, you need taller cusps and deeper fossae. When there is less incisal guidance, means in increased overjet or in reduced overbite, you will be requiring a smaller cusps and shallower fossae. Well, we have discussed it multiple times that in our natural dentition, when we protrude the mandible and incisors, they come in contact, posterior teeth, they get separated. We do not want this to happen in our complete dentures. To avoid that, we need balanced articulation in the complete dentures. The separation of posterior teeth is affected by several factors like Hanauquent, 
the condylar enculation, which is recorded by the protrusive record, incisal guidance, which is set by the dentist when making dentures. I have already mentioned about that, like the overjet and the overbite. Cusp angle and fossae depth selected by the dentist, occlusal plane that is determined by the dentist in forming the wax rams, and curve of Spee and curve of Wilson, which are the compensatory curves in complete dentures that depends on the inclination of their teeth, which are set. We will discuss how we are going to uh, play with that. We need a lingual centric occlusion. Make sure that the palatal cusps of the maxillary second molar occlude properly with the central fossae of the mandibular second molar for the stability of the dentures. And in all the eccentric movements, there will be minimal separation of the teeth so that dentures are going to be stable and positioned properly. Lingualized occlusion can be set as a type of a balanced articulation. Here you can see that. Working side and non-working side. Improved denture stability by maintaining contacts on both sides of the denture in excursions during function. Patient's confidence and comfort as dentures are more stable will be guaranteed. Ballast articulation may reduce rigid resorption and allows for increased functional forces in excursions. That is an evidence-based practice. Yes, it happens. Lingualized occlusion differs from traditionally full balanced schemes by having only the lingual cusp of the maxillary tooth contacting the mandibular teeth to maintain this contact. So over here, we are done with our today's lecture and next Monday we are going to meet and then we will discuss how we achieve this balanced articulation. Um, Hello. Farooq. Thank you very much. And any questions, any queries, uh, please contact us and we will definitely get back to you. We will give you all the responses, whatever your ambiguities, any questions, any queries, we will address to those. Thank you very much and have a very wonderful rest of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon.